Hey guys, my name is Zach, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to levitate an object. Something like, oh, here we go. And so all it takes is a little bit of concentration, and as long as you do... Uh, uh, anyway, I'm going to clean up this mess, and then we'll jump into the tutorial for After Effects. Hang on. So I'm here in After Effects, CS6. The project file, if you downloaded that with the footage, it's only going to work in CS6. But the footage will work in any version, so let's follow along. Let's throw in both clips. Zach floating. That is what we're going to basically call the background plate of me picking it up. And then we've got the cut floating, so let's drop that in as well. And, and what I did to hang this up, it's pretty simple. You can do it with almost anything. I grabbed some tooth floss, some tape, and this cup, and I taped it on there and hung it in front of a blue screen. As you can see, it's just dangling. Super easy to take out this string, which I'm going to show you how to do. Let's go up to our workspace and go down to motion tracking. With this footage selected, we'll go to track motion, put our playhead in the beginning. We'll go to track motion, open this up, and we'll track right here at this edge where it's contrasted with that corner and the blue. That'll track really well. So let's analyze that by clicking this. So it looks like everything got tracked really well. We're going to go to Layer, New, No Object, Edit Target here, and we will make it selected to the null right like that and hit Apply. Don't forget to hit Apply. And now we can see it is right on that object. Beautiful. This tracking will be used in order to delete the string. That's why we did that. So go ahead and hit Command Y. That creates a new solid color. I'm going to just make it white. Turn off the the preview or the site and go up here to this button, the pen tool. And let's select something like that. So if we turn it on, it's all white. We need to parent this to the null. So you can either select it like this or you can drag this little button and you know, parent it like that. So that means it is following it. Look at this. It's just tracked on there. We can zoom in and adjust it a little bit. H is the hand tool you can move around. Go back to the arrow by hitting V. Hit M to open up the mask. And we can look at the parameters here. I'm going to adjust it a little bit closer. But then I'm going to hit F for the feather. Maybe go up to 2 or 3. With the feather. Okay, that's a little much. Let's go to 2. Move it a little closer. So we're hiding the string. Now it looks weird, but we need to drag this down and then hit the toggle switch if you're not here already. And right under here where it says none, we're going to hit alpha inverted mat. The string is gone, mostly. Uh, you may need to go in and adjust certain areas. But what I'm going to do is just keep it here in the beginning. While we're here though, let's go to the cut floating. We'll make a mask. Hit G, that's this button up here. And if you hold down when you're selecting the mask, you can create a round. There we go. We'll change our workspace to all panels. We'll come over to our effects, we'll type in key light, or just key will do it. Key light 1.2, drag this onto our cup. So let's change our color here with the eyedropper. We'll select this blue. Looks like we got a decent key here. Screen gain. I usually bump this up to about 120, so let's try that. Okay, that fixed all the outside areas. Let's go in screen mat. White. Somewhere around 40 usually does the job. Oh, nice. I'll jump in so you can see here. And I'd like to blur this out to get these looking a little better. Maybe something around 9. Okay, so that fixed our edges with that little bit of blur and I can pull in the screen shrink that removes a little bit more of that black around the edges that was unnatural and maybe a little bit more blur now before you do any scaling these need to be together so let's select them we'll make a pre-comp I just right clicked pre-comp I'll call this cup now with this cup, hit S. This is the scale. So now we can adjust everything all nice and neat. If we didn't do that before, the string would be all messed up. So make sure you pre-comp it. 
and that size will do. And by the way, when I shot this, uh, you need to make sure of this. Uh, shoot it in the same lighting. So I shot this right before with the, the keyed element, and then I shot myself in the same position. That way, if your object has different lighting, it's not going to even work at all. We're going to do a little bit of compositing now, and that's to make the element look real like it's in the shot. First of all, my hand is blurred out at this point, and that's because of the focus of the lens. And the cup is very in focus, so that is the first thing eyes pick up usually is the blur. So let's go to blur, and you could either add a little bit of noise and blur. I'm just going to see if I can fake it with the blur. I'll go with a Gaussian. And we're going to blur it out just a little bit, not like crazy, enough to sell it in the shot. So I'm 2.5, 2.6, that's good. Next up, let's select one more filter while we're at it. We'll add levels. This is to the cup. And we're going to pull the mids just up a little tiny bit. Okay, that'll be better. Now let's go ahead and uh, keyframe this thing up. Hold down P, or just click it, and that'll open up our position editor. I just created a keyframe by clicking this, you can see right here. Now that's the first keyframe, it's out of the screen, I moved it down. And let's scrub forward and find the place, I'm going to turn this on quarter quality so that I can quickly render. This is where my hand kind of stops near the top. So let's drag it up there. We created another keyframe. And what we're going to do is make these keyframe interpolations by right clicking you can get here. Spatial interpolations to linear. And then what we're going to do is right click and then go to the keyframe assistant and make them easy ease. So this way it kind of eases into that spot. If you want to make any adjustments along the way, maybe this needs to be a little closer at this point, you can do that. It'll create a new keyframe, which you can also adjust. So it's kind of trial and error. You're animating this and moving it back and forth. I'm trying to keep it probably about six or seven inches from my hand, so just keep that distance with it. Creating keyframes every once in a while, that's up to you. You can see right here my hand kind of drops down a little quicker more abruptly so I'm going to move it over and right before it falls out of my hand we need to create a keyframe probably right here and we'll have it drop drag it off the screen now I'll we'll have to do some adjustments with these keyframes but let's see what the rough looks like Okay, so if we look closely, the cup moves a little bit sooner than my hand here. Looks like what we need to do is select all of these and move them over just a tiny bit. You know, I don't think we need this one. Let's delete that one there. So we get something like that. Now, let's go ahead and select those. Open up our graph editor for the keyframes. One thing you want to do is make this last fall look like gravity so that it, it, it starts to fall and it gets faster as it hits the, what they call in physics, the, the maximum velocity speed. I think that's right. So you grab this little handle here and you pull it out so you get a nice curve and then it speeds up as it goes closer to the ground. So you get something like, like this. That's a little slow so we need to bring this closer. And to get that blur on there, I added this motion blur. You just check this and then check that box. So to turn it on, it's like that. And then one thing I want to do, let's go back to the main editor. I'm going to select these two and move them together because I think it needs to be timed like the fall happens a little sooner. So we look at my eyes, match it up when my eyes hit the ground. That's when that probably hit the ground. Let's take a look at the animation we have. the glass would probably go behind my hand so we're going to need to mask that out let's go ahead and do that now go to the first frame I'm holding command arrow when I move frame by frame first frame it really affects is probably here this is where we can turn on at least half or third quarter quality let's duplicate Zach the floating Zach we'll call this mask we'll put this on top of the layers and I'm gonna hit option and then bracket, right bracket to create this cut. This is the first frame. So we're going to hit 
G and this will create our mask. Okay, that's probably good. Let's go ahead and feather this out like five. And we'll hit M, brings up the math path, <laughs> tongue twister, and then we'll keyframe that. Go forward, and we will just adjust the mask accordingly at each point. And this just this can be pretty rough because it happens so fast too. Looks like we need to add a point over here, so hit G until you get a little plus. We'll drag that over like that. And select these. Again, just pretty rough job here. Sometimes feathers will hide a lot. Oh, we need to go all the way down. You can add new points as you go. This one just needs to be brought off here. That would go behind the arm. We'll call that good right there. And that's all we need. So I'm going to hit Option, left bracket, and that will be the end of that mask layer. As you can see, the feather, if we hit uh, F, maybe we can go up to 10 or something. That'll smoothen that out. If you want to add a little bit of variation here, the cup seems to not really go left and right much, so you can go ahead and throw in some animation if you want to make it do a little bit more movement, maybe not that much. And I would keep massaging that animation a lot more, but let's move on uh, so I don't, you don't have to watch me do that. Hit Command D to duplicate this layer of the cup, and we're going to call this the cup shadow. And we'll move it down below the cup. We're going to go into the effects, and we already have the levels in here from earlier. Let's go ahead and drop this all the way down so it's black if I Turn this off, you can see what's going on. This is the cup shadow layer we're seeing. We also already have the blur on there, so let's bump that way up. We're going to go crazy. And then hit T. This brings up the opacity here in our layers. We probably don't need so much blur because we want to make out the shadow or the shape. But we want the opacity way down. Possibly 30 or 25 will do. You need to select all your positions when you move it around so you don't mess it up. But we're going to place it behind the cup so it's delayed as it's coming up. Something like this. That's a little too close to it. So I'm going to move it down. Way down. Hit T. Let's move that down 20% and see what happens. And as you're previewing it, just look at the shadow and the goal is to sell that it's the shadow of the cup on me. And again, I still, either the blur needs to go up or the opacity needs to go down to 15. And you can get a little idea of how dark the shadow needs to be from my hand that just cast a shadow on my shirt. Now notice how there's a shadow here. I don't know if we necessarily see that shadow. So if that bothers you, you can also mask that out. I would say uh, shadow mask bring that up and I would just I would start that here option right bracket and then definitely add a feather on there and then I'm just gonna get rid of it there And let's make that opacity a little bit more. 24. Let's try that magic number. If you want to get really picky, you can add a shadow in my hand or in your hand. What I would do for that is Command Y, create a new solid, make it dark. Let's turn this off. Let's go up to our ellipse tool. I would do something like this. Let's turn it on and bump up the feather a lot and then turn the opacity down, I don't know, 40%. Maybe not so much feather. 30. And 
and go back to the opacity make that lower it's just a very subtle thing and then what you'll do is hit P for position and keyframe it and you can continue that all the way up animating the mask too so it gets smaller and smaller and hidden when you want to see that shadow in my hand so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial if you want to see one of me getting super buff and ripped Click right over there and VFX Pro will show you how it's done in After Effects. Not that I need that, you know, I'm, I'm already... Okay, well... That's not the reason I don't have a girlfriend. The muscles, because, you know... I'll just click over there. Tutorial. And this is awkward. <laughs>